How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of your favorite Swim Bay podcast, Scales and Tails, episode 141 today. We're just all the way across the ocean over in Australia talking about forward-facing sonar we're on a less controversial topic today. We're joined by Mr. Brennan Banks, who I'm sure you guys might be familiar with if you've been around the swim bait scene at least for a little while. Uh, absolute hammer out there in the Ozarks. We're going to kind of we're gonna first start off the episode. Um, we're recording this on Monday, the day after the Classic, and he was at the Classic, so we're going to kind of pick his brain about what the Classic was like. Then we're going to go into all his fishing endeavors, how he got into it, obviously, and just kind of how what fishing in the Ozarks like and how he uh, how he grew into the the fisherman, the swim bait guy he is. So, Brennan, we're usually we always ask people how they got into the fishing. That's usually the first question. But the first <laughs> question I want to ask you is about the Classic. Was this the first class you've gotten to go to? No, this would be the third. So I've went, I think it was 20, maybe 2012 or 2013 and 2016. So okay. it was whenever Cliff Pace and Evers won. And so this would be my third one in Tulsa. Okay. Heck yeah. Have you noticed it? Um, everybody talks about bass is like, especially proud of how big the tournament fishing scene has gotten and how popular it's gotten among like people watching it and stuff and how big all the venues are and how packed it is. Have you know, did you notice this one like super big compared to the last couple you had been it- to? It seemed that way. It was crowded. It was a big deal. I mean, it was, yeah, it was big. I mean, yeah. hard to compare. It's been years, but right. you know, people, it was pretty nuts. Heck yeah. And so obviously you were there, I'm sure trying to sling some swim baits and stuff. And I, uh, I talked to a couple guys who were there selling some baits at the universe, uh, booth and, uh, Daniel from clickbait was telling me, he's like, man, like it's, it's something different to go to the gathering and sell baits or go to a swim bait related show yeah, and then turn wants. around and, and go to the classic where guys are buying ABS baits and stuff. He's like, you can, you, people will talk to you and you can sell a couple here and there, but it's not like the diehard guys who are, who are yeah. buying baits. I mean, there was- there was a handful of, uh, you know, hardcore swim bait guys there, but that definitely wasn't, but 2% of the guys there, you know, it was right. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of guys that, you know, just want to make a part of their arsenal kind of deal, not really hardcore yeah. swim bait fishermen. So, but, yeah. uh, I think most of the, most, most of the, uh, swim bait guys, I think, I think they did pretty well and sold quite a few baits. So I think it worked out. Yeah. I think, uh, I think next year will be super sick down there in, uh, in Dallas. I think that'll mm-hmm. be super, super sick classic to go to. I'm I'm for sure clearing the schedule and going to that one no matter yeah, what. I'll, I do. I'll be there for that. It'll be fun. You give me an excuse to go to Texas. Yeah, there you go, man. <laughs> yeah. So kind of got the classic talk out of the way. We got we got the icebreaker here. Everybody's got to That's answer cool. how they how they got into uh got into the fishing scene, how they uh usually, you know, it's always the same thing. You know, somebody's dad or grandpa gets into it, but we gotta ask just because we that's what we always do. Yeah, so how did uh, how did fishing start for you? No dad, no grandpa got me into it. I don't know. That's just all I ever wanted to do. So I just, I'd have my mom, she'd drive me around in her car and drop me off at the river all day long. And I finally got a kayak and she'd, I'd strap it on top of her car and have me drop me off at the lake or the river in the morning. And I'd be there all day by myself. So that's all I ever wanted to do. I don't, I don't really remember anything different. So. Heck yeah, mm. man. Did, uh, did you, uh, kind of grow up in the area that you live in fishing now, or at least in yeah, the Ozarks? Yeah. Yeah, I grew up in Ozark, Missouri, so, uh, you know, 40 minutes north of Table Rock, so right in that area, lived there my whole life, and now I just moved down to uh, Springdale, Bella Vista, Arkansas, Rogers, that that area. I'm in Bella Vista, which is about two hours west, south, barely south, and, and straight west of uh, where I grew up, so it's not far, but ended up down here now. Awesome. Is the uh, scenery any different from what you grew up to, or is it kind of pretty much the same? Oh, it's all the same stuff. I mean, I was 40 minutes from Table Rock there, and now I'm 40 minutes from the other side of Table Rock. So, I mean, it's still the same area. It's just, you know, different town. Right. Yeah. So, I guess, how did you, what was your first experience with swim baits? How did you kind of hear about them for the first time or see them? I've got three words for you. Lake Pro Tackle. Lake Pro Tackle has all the gear you need to be ready to have a successful day on the water. Friends of the podcast receive 10% off your orders while using code SCALES at checkout. Checking out code SCALES not only saves you guys some money, but it also helps me host more giveaways to give back to you guys, the listeners. On their website, you can find exclusive and rare swim baits, JDM and BFS products, and of course, conventional tackle. I can't forget to mention Lake Pro Tackle gets the monthly throwback shop colors at the beginning of every month. Also, Orders over $50 get free shipping, including rods. So do me a favor and remember to use code SCALES at checkout to save 10% at lakeprotackle.com. The vast majority of double-digit bass caught in Mexico are caught out of two lakes, Lake Baccarac and Lake El Salto. Josh Daniels Pro Bass Adventures is the only outfitter in Mexico with lodges on both of these trophy lakes. 
With a fleet of Ranger boats at Lake El Salto and Live Scope Plus at Lake Baccarat, Pro Bass Adventures has the best equipped guides and boats in Mexico. Better call Pro Bass, 480-491-9300 or probassadventures.com. We are Mexico Fishing. Staring at that peanut butter and jelly like a large mouth staring at a dollar store worm? Then it's time to upgrade your snackuation. Meat Crafters line of handmade, small batch, pre-sliced salami and charcuterie make the perfect base for your weekend snackle box. Fill a Plano 3600 with an assortment of Meat Crafters old world style salami and charcuterie and you're sure to become the boat ramp champ. Listeners of Scales and Tails can use Scales and Slices at checkout on MeatCrafters.com to save yourself 10% off your cart. The code can be used as many times as you want, so you'll never run out of fuel in your pursuit of giants. The next time you reach into the fridge to load up your boat cooler, skip the fish food and grab a stack of Meat Crafters pre-sliced snacks. They are guaranteed to exceed your PB. Oh, I don't know. I guess just the internet and picked up some S waivers and stuff and started playing with that. And uh, I think it was 20... Uh, yes, uh, it was fall of 2017 and I... Uh, fishing the big bass bash i knew about kgbs so i uh, met up with kevin and bought bought one of his baits in 2017 and uh, that was my that was the start of it pretty well right was uh was there talk around table rock or the ozarks that this guy makes these baits just flat out catch these fish or no no nobody had really done it yet really i mean there was there was like yeah re- really there wasn't any any locals that were doing it hard uh richie was doing it a little bit but for the most part, I mean, no, it wasn't it wasn't a deal that anybody had had played with around here too much. Huh. Is it uh is it kinda out there like everybody knows everybody, you'll see a boat on the water and you'll know who it is right away type deal? For the I mean, somewhat. I mean, yes and no. It's depends on the body of water and stuff. There's a lot of freaking fishermen around here, a lot. Yeah. Do you see a lot of uh like when the big bash comes to town? I mean, you probably see just boatloads of people who are nowhere near in the area just coming to fish it right see all sorts oh, of yeah, yeah i mean lake of the ozarks bash it draws two to three thousand entries on one lake for two days it's nuts yeah that's that's crazy do you uh do you notice like an influx of people coming to pre-fish a week or two beforehand or is it just everybody's just swarming once once the truck comes around yeah i mean as in when the truck comes around you mean like, I, I just, I just meant like yeah yeah like the tournament truck oh, okay yeah yeah um no, I mean, I mean, in that tournament, not a lot of people pre fish. A lot of people get there a day or two early because they're coming from out of town and make a little vacation out of it. But, uh, you know, for the most part, people that are doing it the right way don't really go pre fish for that tournament because you're looking for a bite, you right. know, the right bite. Yeah. So most people, most, most people don't really pre fish for it. But, right. Heck yeah, man. So I guess getting into it that 2017, 2018, do you remember? Did you have any expectations when you were, when you bought a bait from Kevin? Like, did you expect to go out and hammer fish with it or anything like that? Or kind of, I, I, I knew it was going to be a learning curve and I knew it was going to be a little tricky figuring out, you know, I'm being, you know, eight inch bait whenever you had never, you know, nobody's done that around here or anything. I mean, it's kind of intimidating at first, you know, trying to figure it out, but uh, no, I mean, just started throwing them and started getting freaking bits. So it progressed from there pretty quick. Yeah. Did, uh, did you pick up on it pretty quick on how to present the bait and for these fish to bite? Yeah. It took me, it took me a couple of years to figure out how to make like the big fish bite it consistently, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, it was, it was a pretty quick progression. I think. Did, did word travel around fast once you started catching fish? Like once you even just started catching a few fish here and there that, Oh, these guys yeah, are I mean, it, live baits. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It was mainly, mainly the tournament scene kind of picked up on that pretty quick, kind of hard to hide, but uh, like Joseph Montgomery and I, we won the Ozark Mountain Team Trail in, I think it was 2019, I want to say. And uh, so that was probably the first big tournament one on Table Rock on a glide bait. And that word got out pretty quick. So guys started playing with it a little bit. And then uh, Cole and I went up there and had that big bass bash deal one. And, uh, and it blew up even more from there. And now everybody's got at least one of them in their boat somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, has it been crazy to to kind of see it blow up as much as it has? Yeah, I mean, kind of expected, but yeah, it happened quick. Okay. The fish can the fish know it too, right? Have you had to? Um, well, I guess we'll we'll go back to when you first got into it and stuff. So you fishing this eight inch glide bait. I mean, were the bites? Was it just kind of insane how many fish were were eating it and stuff? Yeah, and I mean, yeah, seeing? yeah, they're five, six years ago. I mean, you could throw it anywhere on the lake, any time of the year and you'd have fish, follow it, fight over it, wolf pack it. It's not like that anymore. You, you can have that on the right days and, you know, right, right situations, but 
Yeah, I mean, it used to be a kind of a free for all for the first few years, and it's not that way anymore. It's more situational now. So, like any other bait out there. Right. Yeah. So after after catching them on the KGB and stuff, did you? Um, I know, like you used to catch them on the mother and stuff. What was the kind of the next next bait that you had started to mess around with after the KGBs? That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe some soft baits, Huddlestons and stuff of that nature. Uh, played with some bullshad stuff and uh, and got into like the negotiators and the mother. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing that really stands out right after that. But the ne the negotiator was probably uh, what I found worked worked really well for me shortly after that. So it was something that was just the uh, same kind of uh, size, class of base uh, of bait, but uh, just a completely different style. You know, yeah, fish is 100 percent different. Yeah, for the for the soft baits, did you? Because uh, up here uh, in Michigan, where there's not too much pressure, everybody bitches and pisses and moans about the soft bait not catching fish. But up here, man, you can you can cast that thing, and those fish will come up and smack. You know, they don't always get hooks. Was yeah. that something that you struggled with? Was to have fish commit to the softy, or was it pretty easy? Uh, well, I mean, there's there's a couple of different bites around here that happen, and like just for table rock table rock for example like yeah they'll do that a lot they'll pop it from the bottom i mean it's deep water and those fish like to just shoot up and, and pop it small mouth in spots and large mouth do it too but uh there's a couple other bodies of water where they just freaking inhale it you know you know what i mean like yeah. there's no not hooking them right yeah, yeah. So. what uh what does ozark set up like kind of break down the lake a little bit i guess because i'm kind of familiar but if somebody was to lake ask the ozark yeah yeah Okay. So it's now about three and a half hours for me. I mean, I've, I've put in my time there. I won an anglers in action last March, not this past March, but a year ago to this March. Uh, and, uh, that was my first like big tournament when there besides the big bass bash with Cole. Um, so I, I, I've honestly only fished probably 15 tournaments out there, okay. maybe put 30 or 40 days on it. Like okay. it's not my, not my home home lake by any means. Uh, I know, I know some good areas and, and know where some fish are, but, um, it's just, I mean, it's a, it's technically a Highland Reservoir dam. It's it's a giant river system. It's like 80 miles long, and the whole thing is just docks, rock, big bluffs, mm -hmm. and more docks. Yeah, I mean, big big docks everywhere. The is whole that kind of is that how Table Rock sets up too, or is it a little bit different? Yeah, Table Rock's got a lot more sparse docks. The water level fluctuate fluctuates a lot. Like Lake of the Ozarks, all the houses are built right on the bank. They only let it fluctuate two or three foot. And so there's houses built right on the bank all the way up to the retaining walls, you know, and stuff like yeah. that all around the whole lake. Table Rock, it fluctuates, you know, 30 foot. Um, so most of the houses are all, you know, up the hill and the docks move and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's got a lot more, it's got a lot more flat pea gravel kind of stuff and uh, a little bit clearer water, man, a lot clearer water than Lake of the Ozarks for the most part. Um, they fish, they fish a lot different from each other, Table Rock and Lake of the Ozarks. They're not very similar. Okay, so I would you kind of consider Table Rock your your home lake, your home waters? Yeah, 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 for sure. And you said you're about forty minutes from there, from Table Rock, from the one side you're at now. Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm about forty minutes to the you know the closest ramp on Table Rock, uh, like the main main area of Table Rock, like Kimberling City towards the dam, that kind of area for the people that know what I'm talking about. It's about an hour and a half, so okay, I can still I can still make a day run there easy. Right. Yeah. So I guess. Uh, set or you kind of talked about being able just to fish a glide bait wherever out there and now it seems like you got to kind of be more precise with it and pick apart oh yeah yeah you'd be yeah you could just throw it anywhere pretty well and freaking swim it around and they you, you'd get action at least you might not yeah. hook them but you get a lot of action mm -hmm. it was it was pretty gnarly and i mean the right day out i mean it can still be like that on the right day here but you gotta you gotta time it time it a little better now right it is that, like is that. that oh go ahead go ahead uh, I was going to say like that OMTT we won. It's a fairly big, notable tournament trail in this area. Uh, we won it in middle of August, throwing a glide bait, just Damn. like 100 degrees out. And they still <laughs> ate it. I mean, yeah. it could work in the summer. Don't get me wrong, but it's not really prime prime time for it. Yeah. Most Damn. of those fish are a little bit deeper, but. Right. It's, it's kind of crazy to hear guys talk about like, uh, Cause up here, you know, being a little selfish, I mean, you can fish a glide bait whenever and you're going to catch fish just because it's so, you know, the, the glide bait bite has never been tapped onto or even right. just yeah. bite in general. That's how it was for a while. I mean, but those fish, I feel like get real, real adapted to uh, a glide or a big bait. 
real quick. I mean, yeah. a lot more so than the the, the Damikis and little two point eight swim baits that everyone's throwing right now. I mean, that's that's a lot harder for those fish to get used to. I think just it's not as big a profile and right. you know, yeah, right in their sure. face. It's not a giant clacky thing going left and right. So yeah. they start seeing those things everywhere and they get used to it pretty quick. But yeah, around was it like? I would guess probably around COVID that the fish started to become a little bit weary of glide baits and stuff. Yeah. I mean, right when it, right when that kind of hit, I mean, it was, it was really good for a little while. Um, but yeah, shortly after that, yeah, it started, started slowing down noticeably. Yeah. Was there anything you were doing to kind of set your baits apart? Like were you modding anything or were you just kind of more so? No, going I just, stuff? no, I mean, nothing different. I just kind of stuck with what I knew and, Thought I thought I was doing things better than other people because I had a little bit more experience with it. But, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, there's ways I rig them and stuff like that and just certain presentations I like to use, but nothing, nothing too crazy, I don't think. Right. Did, uh, did you ever notice that uh, like upscaling on baits, like, you know, fishing the mother? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. yeah you like nowadays, notice? you can you can go throw that and it's going to get way more attention. I mean, obviously, that's just kind of the how that kind of stuff works with big baits but uh yeah it, like the super big stuff i think is even more important now because they've seen a bajillion seven inch glide baits you know um yeah if you can go out there and throw stuff a lot bigger than people are are, are throwing for the most part it can it can definitely benefit you i think right and it just seems like anything that you can do to kind of separate yourself just a little bit from somebody else who's presented a bait to that fish you know it's gonna it's gonna set you up in the long run to, to hopefully catch that fish or at least get a chance at that fish yeah absolutely yeah it's a whole whole different presentation when you go that big and yeah they, have you, they like it have you uh so you know gilbert always talks about uh you know uh downsizing hooks and line and everything have you messed around with that at all i the- played with it yeah yeah like you know, if I'm, if I'm out there tournament day or something, and I'm usually fishing 20 pound line with one on hooks, you know, on a regular day. And I'm like, I need to go get bit on this thing. Then I'll drop down to 18 pound flora with some two number two hooks or something. You know, I don't go crazy with it. Like go micro everything, but I, I do, you know, I think that makes a, a little bit of difference. You might, you might, you might hook something you might, might not have, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but, exactly. You I guys, think that's probably more of a confidence deal. I think if you put it in the right place at the right time, then it's probably going to work out. But right, you know. do do you guys have pickerel down there? Not no. There's like little tiny grass pickerel in the, like a couple of the rivers, but no, there's no no chain pickerel or anything to mess with you. Is it really just striper that you're kind of, uh, I guess the unwanted visitor sometimes they come up and smack a bait. And no, just no. I, I mean, I love striper fishing. I striper fish a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, t- we, t- I mean, they're, they get giant out here. Um, but most of the time, like they're only on a couple of lakes around here mm-hmm. and your odds of just running into them on glide baits or like, it doesn't happen frequently. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can target them well with them and, and do really well, but now there's, there's really not a lot of trash fish that are going to come steal your glide baits or nothing like that. Like, I mean, there's long nose guard that obviously will stripers and, uh, there's a, a handful of lakes with muskies in them, but other than that, nothing, nothing too crazy. Yeah. Not really enough to, to worry, worry about. No, 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 off. no, no, no angry pikes or pickerels or nothing like that. Heck yeah, man. If, uh, so it doesn't sound like you're fishing glide baits necessarily like in the summertime. Is it usually more of like a fall, fall and spring? I mean, there's, there's a couple of lakes that I definitely do all summer long. Um, and it's, it's phenomenal. So, I mean, I fish them year round. It's just all on different bodies of water. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you set up your kind of your fishing schedule around the weather and kind of what lakes you want to hit or how do you, oh, do you I get up? Friday, Saturday, Sunday off and I try and hit whatever those days I can. So, I mean, you know, in the summertime, I'll fish after work and stuff and obviously try and try and make a trip I wouldn't have if, if the weather's perfect. So. Heck yeah. Do you, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't get too into, you know, trying to time anything out on the right day or anything like that. I go when I can and, and, then fish, you know, <laughs> like the other day, uh, Kevin and I were out testing the, the, the new trout that we're working on mm-hmm. horrible day, rolled up to the freaking lake flat calm like dead still just horrible like bluebird skies rolled there right, right it looked horrible 
like, we ain't going to catch nothing. This is going to suck. And then 10 minutes in, I catch an eight pounder on it, comes up on the top and just freaking smokes it. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, <laughs> Man. but you know, some of those days that you think are going to be right and they're not. So I just go. Right. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta take it when you got the chance. Yep. Just go. Uh, I guess that that trout. I mean, Kevin's been talking about it a little bit, and after you guys had posted that picture the other day, I was just like, man, that hey, Kevin was uh, live. I think like must have been last yeah. Tuesday or Wednesday. Yeah, up. I watched it. And I was like, man, that thing, that thing looks pretty dang good. That's for sure. He's he's putting a lot of work into it. I mean, it's he's working on it every day. So we're not just holding it back or nothing. We're haven't got into production with it or anything yet. Just trying to get it really dialed. Right. Was that the, was that the first day you got to mess with it when you went out with Kevin the other day or do you have pretty well, like I had swam it on the lake before that, just for a minute, you know, uh, like the day before that, but, uh, that was the first time I'd really fished it. So, right. What, uh, what's a, what's like a really respectable fish, like eight, nine pounders, like pretty, pretty dang big for your guys' neck of the woods. Yeah. Like table rock. There's been two nine pounders caught this year. Last year. I don't think there was a nine pounder caught. Um, but there's a couple bodies of water around here that, you know, they produce seven pounders frequently. So, I mean, like a seven's big around here. Like you, you very rarely see fish over eight pounds in Missouri. Dang. Like an eight pounder is a giant Missouri, anything over eight. Yeah. Is, is Missouri the type of place where, where you got to blur your backgrounds because guys will come find your spots or they know lakes pretty well? It depends. I mean, yeah, yes and no. I mean, it depends. Um, yeah, I mean. If if somebody wants to, they're going to find out where you're fishing one way or another. Yeah, pretty well. I mean, there's there's not a lot of secrets, but I'm in Arkansas now is where I'm living. But just in Arkansas, most of my fishing is still done in Missouri. So, hmm. Missouri doesn't have like a uh, like a program like like share lunkers or anything over there, do they? They don't do anything special. No, no they don't do anything really. Does they do? No. Does Table Rock is that uh, like a shad lake? Is that primarily with the forage? Yeah, it's all, yeah. I mean, their main main forage is thread fins and crawfish. There's gizzards in there that get you know as big as they want to, but uh, their main their main source is thread fins, and then like in the summer and the dead of winter, especially is is crawfish. So does uh, does Missouri do any trout stockings? Is that like a trout yeah, stocking? Yeah, state? there's there's trout all over Missouri. Um, not very many of the big lakes have them. But like there's, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a handful of lakes, mostly in the Southern part of the region, like Table Rock has trout, Taney Como has trout, Bull Shoals has trout. And then there's, um, those are all in a chain. Okay. So it's Table Rock, Bull Shoals or Table Rock, Taney Como, then Bull Shoals. They've all got trout in them. Uh, Taney Como's loaded with them. Uh, parts of Table Rock are, um, and then there's a bunch of little state parks and stuff for fly fishing and stuff like that, that those trout end up getting into couple other places but yeah i mean there, there's 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 quite a bit of trout you notice uh that the, when those trout are around it and if you pluck a bass off do you notice those fish built or any more stout than the fish across the lake or around yeah, the area? yeah I, I think so i mean it it seems that way mm-hmm. you, you can know when you're around fish eating trout and they're they're the right kind of fish yeah is missouri all northern strain or have they introduced f1s at all no, Missouri is 100% northern strain, and then you get into Arkansas. Like, I can go 40 minutes south of me and get in, just start getting into Florida strains. Like, oh, really? the power plant lake that has Florida's in it. And then I can drive about an hour, hour and a half into Oklahoma from my house, and I can get into regular Florida strains and F1s and stuff. Yeah. But is Missouri there- here northerns right is is there uh i mean it sounds like you've gotten to handle both pretty pretty decently because they're around you is there a big difference in the way they're built are those f1s a lot longer and a lot lankier i don't know that the 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 northern strains around here they just top out like lengthwise Mm -hmm. like they can get big but like you very rarely catch them over 23 inches so they just don't reach 10 pounds often like it's a really special deal if you were to find one over nine pounds like extremely special just because those fish top out around 23 inches most of them don't even get that big most of them are you know stop there in, in between 22 and 23 and they'll yeah. get fat and healthy but they just they won't weigh much over eight most of the time yeah yeah that's how that's how our large mouth and even kind of small mouth here are too i've caught a gajillion 19 19 inch fish and i, I yep. my longest fish was 21 and a half inches and that was it was a long fish, but it didn't have a gut compared to all these 19 inch fish. I mean, you'll catch a 19 inch fish that weighs five and a half pounds and it looks like a, it looks like a dang near bluegill. Cause it looks like such a pie. Right, plate. Right. 
the fish here yeah. are just literal blimps. And uh, I've kind of always wondered if, if, if they were to get introduced with the F1s, if, if they'd get a little bit longer and keep that build that they, the, that they kind of seem to have. Hard to say for sure. Um, yeah. A lot of these fish, they top out at 21 inches, but some of them, you know, those 21 inch fish, like some lakes they're seven pounders and some lakes they're four and a half pounders. So yeah. Yeah, that's like uh, you can look at fish and and uh, we we talk about it quite a bit how how each fish like is its own personality. I mean, some fish you look yeah. at a fish and it looks dense as hell, and it's the same size as the four and a half. And like you said, this one's topping out at six six and a half, and it's just the way that fish is built and whatever it has in its stomach. It just is kind of insane that that these fish the characteristics don't change as far as visuals. It just it depends on how thick they actually are. Yep, no doubt. Uh, dimensions of fish. Oh, I had a question to follow that up with. I guess, um, are your guys a striper pretty similar in build? Like, is there some, is there special strains of striper? There, I, to my knowledge, there's not really special strains. There's saltwater and there's river run saltwater that go up in a fret and there's landlocked freshwater. Yep. To my knowledge, there's not any different strains, but uh, the striper here are, like super healthy as as healthy as it gets right like there's there's been some fish out of uh bull shoals and table rock which i say table rock it doesn't actually have a population of striper but it had a six, 68 pounder caught out of it but it come from that fish come from beaver so it, it it was caught below beaver lake which beaver's loaded with striper i'm 15 minutes from beaver now mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I mean, Bull Shoals has had numerous fish over 65 pounds caught, and they're all just freaking just bloated oh freaks. God, that, I mean, that's they, crazy. They, like, like, like the schoolies around here um, range anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds. Like, you can go catch numerous 30-pound fish on the right bite in a day. That's, that's crazy. Are they uh, – so I've always heard of, like, the blitz, like, when they're hitting, busting up shad and stuff up on top, and you can, you know – cast that yeah. hunker or whatever it may be is that is that how uh do you see that happen quite a bit the yeah. Water? oh yeah yeah absolutely dang yeah, yeah they'll, they'll, me, get, they'll get going crazy yeah part of me wishes we had them up here but i know it would just make the large mouth and small mouth fishing suck i just oh, want, I, so just want fun. I mean yeah like i said they're not they're not really a nuisance when you're bass fishing around here just because they're they're kind of in specific areas and like beaver lake is phenomenal striper fishery and i don't bass fish it really if i'm going out there i'm gonna striper fish or you know mess around fish but uh and then bull shoals it, it's got a it can have a really good striper bite um and i like to target them out there every once in a while and yeah i mean they're both they both have just crazy phenomenal fish like just right. super healthy fish as, as, as healthy as they can get really mm -hmm. What's uh what's your PB striper and was it on a swim bait or was it on something else? Nah, I've got a couple right around 40, like right at 40, but they're growing. There's there's different size classes of fish around here where they've stocked and waited a couple years, stocked, waited five years and stocked. Like there, there's different class. So there's not like they're not throughout every range. Like you've got you've got different classes of fish, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Um so they're like a lot of the fish are topped out around 40 pounds. Um, but there are a handful of fish on, you know, around here on, on beaver. And then there's, there's some fisheries south of here that uh, have some, some 50, 60 pounders right now. So but coming, coming soon, we'll have, we'll have some fifties hit the deck, I think, but. Man, 60, I mean, a 40 pound striper, what's that do? Yeah. They, they dog pretty hard. They only fight for a couple minutes or. No, no, they, they'll mess you up. They, <laughs> they get mad. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what, what's the gear you go out to, to tango with a, with a, you know, 30, 40 oh, pound class. Striker? Same stuff. I mean, just typical F5 swim bait rods I could use and, uh, like, I don't know, lose super duty 300s or the Revo beast 41s or, uh, you know, nothing, nothing different. Just. Make sure your hooks and splits are up to date and <laughs> keep those sharp and, and heavy. And it, it it's, yeah, I mean, make sure you're running braid with the leader is what I like for those stripers that like to peel a whole bunch of line and stuff. So, yeah. Are you, are you the type of guy who, who plays fish a little bit or you just grind them into the boat whenever, whenever they make that mistake to bite? I mean, bass fishing, I like to grind them in for the okay. most part. Yep. Like, I've learned my lesson, not like if they start digging at the boat and they get turned away from you, not to try and pull them in. Cause I've bent out way too many hooks doing that. Right. So, I mean, I like, I like to try and get them in, but if they, if they get turned away from me, I'll, I'll play them out there for a minute, but. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's a couple of videos I've seen of, of table rock or, 
uh, th th maybe it was Ozark, where, where they're fishing like the mother and stuff around floating, floating docks and stuff. Is that a pretty common thing that guys will go out and do is, is fish around the structure and stuff or not structure? the? They're uh... not throwing mothers. I hadn't, <laughs> I hadn't seen that one. Um, but yeah, like, yeah, those fish like to suspend around here. Like mm -hmm. they, they suspend a lot. Yeah. Are, are those, uh, I guess you had said that the, the table rock water fluctuates a lot. Are those mm -hmm. docks in some pretty, pretty deep water? Like those fish are sitting under yeah. 20 feet. Yeah. Most, most, you know, just on average, the dock, the ends say the ends of most docks are in between 30 and 70 feet. Okay. Huh. And those fish will still suck up right up on the ends of those docks underneath the floats and stuff. They like to do that for whatever freaking reason, I guess, just because they're out there close to the creek channel. And that's where the bait's coming by is what I mean, what makes sense to me. I don't know. Yeah. Is is the, are the glide baits usually what what you fish majority of the time when you're fishing a swim bait or do you mess around with the swimmers and stuff? Yeah, I mean, I I, I fish all of it, I like line throughs and, and huddle stems and mags and all that kind of stuff so i throw all of it i've got i've thrown all of it and caught fish on all of it pretty well right uh, yeah i play with play with all of it i get sure, to fish uh, a lot of different waters and a lot of different conditions and stuff so yeah is there a, is there a cadence that you usually try to stick to or is it you just kind of let the fish tell you what they want yeah i mean when they're really on it they like that fast erratic stuff but uh winter time spring time like right right around now they they like they like slow and methodical um no i mean there's just day to day day to day as right. far as cadence yeah what uh what what's your guys's winter setup like can you fish a lot of days out of the winter if you wanted to yeah it's it it like only the small lakes will freeze if we get a bad winter i mean sometimes you'll see parts of the big lakes freeze the creeks and stuff but yeah, you can fish all year long it's you'll always have water somewhere Right. Is, have you found it to be, you know, worth getting the boat up and out there in the winter time? Have you seen success? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a, there's, there's phenomenal winter bites out here. The swim bait isn't the best deal in the winter here. Right. Most of those fish like to go out deep and suspend and chase thread fins and stuff on most of the lakes around here. But, um, yeah, you, yeah. Phenomenal winter fishing. Right. Have you, uh, have you noticed, um, the fishing change at all with, with all the new technology and stuff. Have you noticed guys yeah. catching, catching bigger fish, you know, into winter or whatever it may be rather than yeah, before? like, like table rock the last two years, especially this year. I mean, it's pumping out bags that it, I mean, people haven't seen in 12 years since like the Alabama rig first come out and it dominated everything out here. It was nuts. Um, and now we're seeing those bags again. Um, I think it's, it's a combination because table rock itself is fishing, insane and i think it's a combination of the lake doing really really well and people learning forward facing sonar and and yeah. being able to dial in on those fish really well right is uh is the lake on an upswing you think or is it just kind I, of yeah i mean table rocks is as good as it's been in a long time like say it's 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 doing super well um and most of the other lakes around here there's a couple that are freaking sucking but most of them around here are doing really well as far as what they have been in the last 10 years right do you think there's there's any particular uh, uh, reasoning for for them to be kind of popping off right now? I mean, there's some theories and stuff, but nothing. I don't have any. I mean, right. guys are guys are dialing them in on 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 scope and stuff deep, getting getting to target those fish they hadn't before. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, uh, uh, there's there's more pressure now than there ever has been, really. So. Right. Yeah. But, but, uh, as far as the lakes actually truly being healthier, I don't, I don't know what it is. I don't, I mean, they just, they cycle. I think, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's hard to yeah. say. Yeah. Kind of like what we're seeing down there in Texas. Some of those lakes are on the upswing right now. And, and yeah. kind of the theory that, that I've, uh, kind of established myself, I guess is, is our winters up here have been pretty mild the last two or three years counting this year. And I think that these fish up here can just, they, you know, they get an extra, month month and a half two months uh, of active feeding time and i really really think that makes a difference i mean there was a lot of seven pounds small seven to eight pounds of my mouth caught this year more Either. than i had seen in years prior and now i mean there's guys catching eight eight and a half pounds small mouth i mean they're they're uh the one guy i think finished with 60 over five and a half pounds this year or something like crazy where, where are you located uh uh you know like grand Traverse bay no uh okay okay well i'll show you i'm like, like a state 
No, Michigan, Michigan. Michigan. I'm like, Michigan. Up, up that looks top. like Michigan. You held up your hand, and I thought okay. Michigan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't do my research real well. No, you're good. Okay. Man. Yeah, yeah. Northern, northern Michigan is where where the fish is starting to pop off, and even nice. like Saint Clair. I mean, we caught uh, first time I'd ever been out on Saint Clair was last April, and we almost had thirty pounds with a seven seven pound largemouth. I mean, that's nuts. I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I do large remember. mouth out of St. Clair. I've never. Yeah. Oh. Dude, I, I had never been before. I don't know if I can go back. That was the first time I'd ever been there. I, I think I can't, I can't go back. So I don't think I'll ever be able to have a day like that again. Yeah, no doubt. I'm fixing to go do some smallie fishing here in about six or eight weeks up there at Mille Lacs. Gonna, I'm oh. going to go spend a week up there. So that'll be fun. Heck yeah. I ice fish that lake and it's a, it's a very interesting lake to say the least. It, it's interesting. It's tricky but they're loaded oh yeah yeah for sure i don't think it's anything like what you got up there i mean you're not catching seven pounders but you can go catch a snot out of some four to five pound smallies oh man i i wouldn't i wouldn't uh i wouldn't turn that down uh yeah tactical bass and guys will go up to that uh that grand traverse base spot i was talking about and they'll go out and they'll hammer some smallmouth and stuff and i mean i've been wanting to get up there to 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 little bay to knock way up there in northern Mm -hmm. really been wanting to get up there i know that can be crazy but that's that's a bit of a haul. Yeah, like yeah. No matter which way you go, if you go up and around this long, <laughs> you go up and through, it's even longer. No <laughs> doubt. That's like no uh, doubt. up here. We kind of get spoiled. You were talking about your water clarity and stuff. I mean, out on that Grand Traverse Bay, it's it's not uncommon to be in 35, 40 foot of water and look down and, and see your pink, yeah. pink robo worm down there. I mean, it's 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 yeah. absolutely insane. Yeah, you'll see you'll see table rock and bull shoals get close to that, like every once in a while, not every year, but every once in a while you'll see. You'll see 20 to 30 foot of viz, um, but most of the time it's varying from like four to 10 foot of viz, most of the stuff we fish around here. Right. And, and your uh, your opinion, if you could go out and, and, and fish right now and pick how it would be, what do you have a preference in visibility? Or would you rather fish stained water, clear water, or kind of? Are we talking swim bait fishermen or uh, fishing? Yeah, 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 fishing yeah, swim or... bait, swim bait fishing. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, I like a little bit of color to it. I don't, you know. Gin clear, they'll they'll freaking eat. But uh, like if I'm if I'm going to target big large mouth with a with a say a glide bait right now, I don't think you're looking for that four to six foot of viz somewhere in that range. Yeah. You know, I mean it. They're not too picky. They'll eat it in all 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 conditions on the right day and right presentation and everything. So yeah, yeah. It, uh, it's always interesting to hear like when I have guys from like Louisiana or, or you know wherever, and they're talking about fish and chocolate milk, and I just I just shake my head because I could not imagine, man. <laughs> yeah, I went down to JB Thomas last month. Ooh. It was uh, it was did it kick my ass? It was horrible. The guys were like, I was I only got to fish it for two days because the wind was so bad, but uh, it was it was tough on everybody those couple of days. So I, I don't know if I suck or if it just sucked those couple of days, but that was freaking brutal. And that's some chocolate milk water right there. <laughs> yeah, it's the dirtiest water I've fished. It's zero viz, like zero. Yeah. Have, uh, have you gotten to fish OHIV at all? Yeah, I fished it last year with uh, Alec Weicker. Him and I yep. made a trip down there. Yep. And uh, it was it was tough. We uh, It was tough on us. I mean, we caught a bunch of fish, but no giants. Like, biggest was seven. Mm. Yeah, did you did you see any fish that that you were like, okay, that's that's a double digit for yeah, sure? Yeah, we, yeah, we we saw a handful, but they were they were hiding that week. We hit it for a full week, and they were hiding. They was we were down there the same week that uh, was named Dalton Smith. That kid down there, he caught he caught two fourteens yeah, in a day. Yeah, yep. We were there the day he caught those, but uh, like other than that, that that whole week was dead. Like just it was dead, and then bam, bam, two giants, and then nothing. So yeah. who knows? That's tricky. It. That's crazy. Tricky, I mean, I, I assume there was a bunch of people out there when you guys were out on OHIV. Yeah, uh, it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, it was crowded, but not not that bad, you know, 100 well, boats on water, but it's yeah. 25, 30, whatever, however big it is, 25,000 acres or something. So right. it's not like you were stacked on top of each other or nothing. Yeah. Was was JB pretty, pretty packed when you guys or when you had gone? And I mean, it's it was kind of the same deal. Like there was there'd be 20 boats at the busiest we saw it and. I mean, yeah, it was busy. We were all kind of rotating spots, but it wasn't like you're casting over each other and stuff. Right. Huh. Fighting over spots and stuff like that. Like it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. I mean, all the spots got pounded pretty quick throughout the day, but yeah. At the yeah. same time, it's zero viz. So like those fish don't know you're there unless they hear you or you freaking knock them in the head with your bait. So, 
Yeah. Were you, were you down there fishing a swim jig or what were you doing on JB? Yeah, pretty well. I mean, I tried some other stuff, but yeah, for the most part, that's, that's kind of the deal there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I kind of, kind of figured, does it, uh, would you rather fish down there in Texas or do you like, you like your home waters a little bit more? I mean, I catch, catch them a whole lot better up here, but they're a lot bigger down there. So <laughs> it's kind yeah. of hard to say. Yeah. I mean, I mean, they're, they're more finicky down there. They get even more pressure. I think the big fish do, especially, um, and those Florida strains are finicky. Like they only bite when they want to, but when they want to, it's nuts. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, uh, say, say you were down there at JB a couple of weeks ago and you caught a 13 and a half or whatever, maybe, or would you, would you have given that fish for the share lunk or would you have let it go? If it was on a lake like that, that is already getting hammered, then yeah, I probably would have, but like there was a couple small lakes that we did good at and uh, I probably wouldn't have there just for the sake of the lake, but I don't know. Hard to say until you do it. Yeah. Is, is share Lunker, do they make, do they make the public announcement of the lake and everything when you submit one or when, when they take In it Texas, off? Yeah. Yeah, they do. So yeah, it kind of, it kind of toasts that lake for a minute usually from yeah. what I've seen. Right. Yeah, it kind of kind of makes you sit back and wonder, throw throw a dart at the map and see which which lake is is going to be the next reservoir that kind of pops off. Hey, I mean, here in five ten years, dude, so many there. I mean, all those Texas lakes are going to freaking be pumping them out just the way they're taking care of them and stuff. Like, yeah, so many. I mean, almost all of them fit. Almost all of those lakes have ten to thirteen pounders in them. Yeah, man, absolutely, absolutely insane. Does that make you wonder? If, uh, you know, if, if some of these other states with, with good fish and good, good bass populations and stuff would kind of implement something like Texas has. I don't know. Texas has it all right. And they've got all the freaking water in the world to do it with and all the people to support it. So it's hard to say. I don't know. It might be kind of tricky in a couple of other states, but it would it definitely wouldn't hurt nothing. I don't think right. if some other states tried it out, I think Oklahoma could use it and mm. Arkansas could probably benefit from that uh, missouri maybe not i mean just because there's not a lot of big fish right just, um, i don't know it's it's hard to say yeah you know? it, it, it's kind of hard to to say like okay well we're gonna you know the quote-unquote share lunker is it's gonna be seven pounds right know, yeah i mean if they did that, i mean it would take such a long time i mean i know texas has been doing it for a long time it would it would take a long time for it to really make an impact i think like 20 30 years before it really like all the genes have cycled and you know it's it'd be it'd be quite the process but yeah i don't think any state would hurt from that putting the right genes in the right lakes like yeah Yeah, i think uh i think texas started in like 90 90 something and they're just now crossing over i think 700 number 700 uh share lunker which i mean that's that's a lot lot of the right genes yeah that's (laughs) a lot of damn fish and and it kind of makes you wonder how many of those fish that have recently been caught are are ones that have been through the share lunker program i'm sure that's a pretty one way or another i'd bet i'd bet the very large majority have been they've got those genes in them somewhere Mm -hmm. might be way down the line or they might be almost pure you know yeah it's hard to say yeah, uh, it, I know. I know. I know. In the share locker program, they they only accept fish that are true Florida strains. Like if it's oh, a hybrid, they don't they don't want it. Like they will really? take it in. They'll do their test. From what I understand, don't mm-hmm. quote me, but that's that's what I've been told and, and heard a few times. So, uh, yeah, they they only want true Florida strains because they are going to get the largest. They're going to get bigger than F ones. They might not get as big as fast or or yeah. be as aggressive or whatever else. But uh, yeah, they they only want the true Floridas that get real big. Huh. That's interesting. I did not know that. That's a interesting piece. Yeah. Of- like you can turn a fish in, like I said, from what I understand, you can turn a fish in if it's got freaking 20% Northern in it or whatever, uh, however that works, then they'll, they'll just release that fish. They won't breed it. That's interesting. I wonder, uh, I wonder if, if there's uh, like a, a real big reason behind that. If, if there's a, if there's a fall off in the genes, Florida, Florida strains get bigger. I think that's all it comes down to is my guess. Right. I don't know, but they, they do get bigger. There's no yeah. arguing that. Right. Yeah. Damn. That's interesting. So I guess uh, what, uh, what, what's your PB large month? We kind of talked about your striper. Let's go. Um, talk about I've got a 10 and a 10 one. Uh, had some shots at some bigger ones, but that's where I'm stuck at the moment. Right. Were either of them on swim baits or both on swim baits? 
Uh, one was on a negotiator in Texas on a little river from the kayak, and then one was a Mexico spinnerbait fish. Dang, off the kayak in a river, dude. That, that's pretty uh, bad. I was on a kayak, on a kayak trip solo by myself, way down in the middle of freaking nowhere. And I, I, I got off on the bank because I saw that, saw that fish earlier and got her to eat a negotiator from the bank. Okay. Kayak, bank, whatever. Right. Damn, dude. That, that's crazy. I mean, you you hook into a fish like that with, with some current, even if it's just a little bit. I mean, shit hits the yeah, fan. I mean, it wasn't even current, but it was just gin clear water. And I mean... I missed her about an hour before the sa- I, I assume the same fish. Um, and, uh, went back down the river, cut back up, got on the bank and made the cast that I made just opposite coming from the, the other direction. And you followed it all, all the way up to my feet. And, uh, I just sat there and dead sticked it for a good 30, 45 seconds because I had it pretty well suspending that bait uh-huh. and she was just nosed up to it with about four foot of line out. And she finally just come up and just, boink, just nipped a hook. Stuck her. It was. It was interesting. It's not a typical catch, but I I just. I mean, I never moved it, and she just finally just nipped a hook. I don't know how I stuck her, but I did. So worked out. I mean, I got to imagine. I know. I know myself, and I know many other guys. You know, after ten seconds of that fish nosing up on that bait, I probably would have just pulled that bait in because I've never had success doing that. But the fact that you I haven't either. I just. I mean, she just kept getting close. I mean, it was suspended perfect, just a foot or two below, and she just kept getting closer. So I didn't want to do anything crazy, right? And have her peel off because I mean, she could see me. I was yeah. standing right there. Yeah, like we were looking each other in the eyes pretty well, and and so I just just. Kept holding it there, just trying to stay still to see if she's going to do to it. <laughs> she nipped it, and I uh, luckily I, I brought my net with me from my yeah. kayak because I was on. I was standing on a giant boulder. Yeah, walked up with my net, hoping I was going to catch her, and sure enough, that worked out. Damn, dude, did it have one whole hook or just one prong? Just one one pin in the bag. Whoa! Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> and I mean, it was four foot of line out on a one yeah. X number one gammy. And uh, just thumb spooled her and let her dig for a second and pulled her up. Dang. Up Worked out. That, up to that point, what was uh, – did you catch that fish in Mexico beforehand or did you – was that uh, – No, that was after. I had caught – before that, I had caught a couple of right around – right at nine. Hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, I had two right at nine before that. Um, an hour before that fish, I caught an eight and a half. Uh, and then I after that eight and a half, I made that next cast, and that's when that ten hit it missed her and then yeah. doubled back around an hour later and caught her yeah so i mean you almost you almost had eight, 18 and a half pounds in a matter of a couple casts yeah that was cool that was cool and then i ended up catching three more sixers that day so it was a good day all in the negotiator yeah yeah do you do you retire do you retire a bait like that after after a day like that no i've still got it and i'll throw really? it on the right day yeah i mean it freaking beat to crap and i've sealed it with freaking glue and stuff but it still catches them. That's badass, man. I don't wow. want to lose it, but uh, I ain't I ain't that worried about it. It catches them better than the rest of the negotiators I've thrown. Like they all right. vary pretty well. So yeah. Have you noticed uh kind of you get it with the mothers and stuff? I haven't had too many negotiators. Do the certain batches from paint paint schemes and stuff swim different than others? I don't know. Yeah. They I mean they definitely all swim different from one another, like for sure. Yeah. Some of, uh, I've heard the new mothers and I'm sure negotiators too have a lot more uniform swim since they're all CNC and not necessarily all hand carved. Didn't even know that they were like, I, yeah. I don't have a clue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, I've had, I've had two now and the one I have now swims way different than the first one I had. My oh, first yeah, mother. Was... Yeah. I've got two right now and there's, I've been through six or seven of them to find these two. And those are the two that I really won't sell. Like they're, they're awesome. Yeah. Um, the other ones were like, yeah, you can get bit on them, but they're not, they're not the deal. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, you know, whether it's how they carve it or whatever it may be, if they take an extra millimeter off somewhere or else, they, they, they can differ quite a bit. And it's kind of, I could, I could almost like you buy one, you spend, you know, 300, 400 bucks when, when they were hard to get and, and you get one and you're like, man, this thing does not swim like I've seen in videos. I mean, that could be pretty discouraging until you figure yeah. out that I mean, they're all different. Baits are gonna, they're going to bury a ton. Like they do. So just talk about striper, talk about large mouth. It's only, it's only right in order that we talk about a small mouth and musky PB. So your, your small mouth PB, is it some crazy, crazy big fish that you caught dead sticking at your no. feet? Crazy. No, 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 nothing like that. No, uh, 
So I, I don't think I've weighed a small mouth over five. Uh, I've caught two that were over five, but didn't get an official weight on them. Um, yeah, I caught a, caught a mean mouth out of the James River young upper table rock, like where, where the James River flows into the table rock. So one of the rivers flow, flows in, caught, caught a mean mouth that was probably pushing five. Um, and then I caught one on Bull Shoals on an Alabama rig out of my kayak when I was, uh, I don't know, probably 18, 17, 18 on an Alabama rig right when it came out. That was that was definitely over five. That was probably my bigger one. I uh, went to Mille Lacs and caught some heavy fours, um, but nothing crazy. I've caught plenty of mid fours on Table Rock. I don't think I've caught a five that I've weighed, though. So nothing crazy on the smallmouth. Caught lots of quality smallmouth, but uh, – no, no mega giants. Your uh, your smallmouth down there, like on on uh, on Table Rock and Ozarks and stuff, are they get they get long? They, they get long and they're healthy, but they're not those tall football shaped ones. ones. They're 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 just they're long and healthy. They're just not that they're not that strain. Right uh, now, there's some fish in Oklahoma that get like that on a couple of lakes that I'm not too far from that I'll be chasing before long. I'd like, like to go stick one of those, but uh, I mean, they, they catch them over six fairly, you know, fairly frequently for, yeah. for around here. Yeah. It's kind of weird that Oklahoma South of Missouri and they, they pump out way bigger smallmouth right. than Missouri does. Like their, their state record, they've caught several fish over eight, like at least three. Uh, Missouri's state record is seven, two. So it's kind of weird, but wow. there's some big ones in Oklahoma. Uh, Arkansas doesn't pump out that many big ones either. Like there's, there's big ones, but not, not, not seven plus pounders to yeah. be had. Like there are in Oklahoma, very few of them, but they're there. Uh, Missouri's yeah. got them, but they don't get caught. Yeah. Hey, there's, hey, there's some there. Dude, for whatever reason you catch a, you know, you catch a four and a half, four, three quarter, five pound smallmouth, And in that fish just looks absolutely giant for whatever yeah. reason compared to a green yeah. fish. I don't know what it is, but it's just like, it's brown. Oh, they're just dense little bricks. They're yeah. mad. They're angry. They're yeah. They're fiery. Yeah. And it may just be yeah. because they're so full of piss and vinegar. They, they just serve. Exactly. Yeah. They, I mean, yeah. I caught several mid fours on table rock and some on bull shoals. Uh, like I said, two maybe two over five, but no, no, no official weights. So you uh, do they come up and tango with the swim baits? Pretty no, free? yeah, they, they're, yeah, they're frustrating as hell. They'll freaking yeah. come up and knock it five feet out of the water and just pop it three times, four times in a cast, and never hook them, but hook them in the top of the head all the time because they're just <laughs> being freaking little crackheads, and they just come up and yeah, how just yeah. yeah, they're yeah a lot yeah they mash a swim bait around here, they mash it. For is sure. it kind of is it kind of they come up and they smack it if you're fishing it really fast and erratic or do they come they up like it i mean they do they, i mean they, they'll they'll eat it both ways but they definitely right. like in the warmer months you can fish it fast and erratic and they'll come up and pop it three four yeah. times in a cast and you might hook them one of those pops right. like and if yeah. you do hook them it's usually a hook outside the mouth or you know, one prong or in the high head or they're just freaking crazy so yeah i mean that that's it that seems like smallmouth are pretty universal they just they yeah exactly yeah sizes. smallmouth are smallmouth they're they're not as big down here but uh they're still smallmouth they're they're wild little buggers heck yeah what about musky you kind of mentioned that you have some musky fishing opportunities down there yeah, yeah. uh so there's there's four, only four lakes in missouri that hold muskies like oh. that are actually stocked with muskies and have a population there's a couple more that they've got into and stuff like that but uh, essentially like there's really only three that are worth targeting muskies in there's a couple little 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 bodies that you can you can go catch them in but uh three lakes palm de terre fellows and another one up north um way up north missouri but um now i caught uh, my first muskie ever i had been trying to catch one for about two years for my kayak this was when i was 16 years old i had been really trying to catch one and i was stoked about it I just i wanted to catch a muskie just <laughs> That was hard. Yeah. To catch them. There was only one lake around me, too, really, that had them. And uh, I was out there throwing an Alabama rig on Christmas Eve of 2016 and caught a 50 incher that uh, no weight or anything. Uh, not accurate measurement. It was, I can say with confidence, over 50. Mm -hmm. I had a seamstress tape that I held up on it while it was freaking laying in my lap and stuff on a kayak when it was 24 degrees. So <laughs> it was over 50, but I don't have an accurate measurement. Yeah. Um, and then two weeks later, just about 200 yards away and two, three, yeah, same, same a rigs, same everything caught another one that was equivalent. Um, both, both like probably heavy 30 pound fish, like giants, big, big muskies. 
Uh, and then since then, I've caught multiple multiple fish in the 45 to 48 range. Um, most of them bank fishing with glide baits. Um, but yeah, those, those two big ones come, come early and on an A rig in the middle of winter yeah. and from the kayak, both of them are from the kayak in the middle of winter. <laughs> one was, one was Christmas Eve and one was like the second week of January. Have you tried to replicate that bite since then? Not really. Um, not, not specifically, well, you yeah. know, um, now there, there's big fish. I mean, it's a little, little lake fellows. Like I'm not scared to say that there's a bajillion of them in there. Um, and catch them, catch them real good in the fall on glide baits and stuff like that. Um, top waters. I usually only fish for them in the fall. Mm -hmm. I might fish for them a little bit this spring, but I feel like I go out in the fall and usually get bit once a day really? pretty consistently. So I just kind of roll with that. Damn dude. Do, uh, Oh, do, do you, when you go out with glide baits, are you fishing smaller glides? Are you fishing like the King Shad for them or kind of what's your, I, I've, I've thrown the big stuff. Like I've, I've put the mother and the King in front of some fish mm -hmm. that had just followed various baits or like I knew they were in the area or something, come back the next morning. Yeah. And they haven't been as interested in that as like that nine inch range for me, like the legend and the nine inch bull shad. Like that's kind of the meat and taters for him for me for some reason. Uh, Kevin just caught a good one this past fall on a king, but uh, I've just uh, I've had a lot better success in that nine inch on those nine inch baits on this lake for some reason. So right. I usually throw my beat up legends or nine inch bull shed form or yeah. big one ninety whopper plopper or something like that. Yeah. I I had I'd never had any follow the the mother or the Hinkle uh Hinkle trout, but they will follow a uh that that flag two fifty five. I had a bunch follow that two fifty five yeah, like, this summer. And I I would I would have let him eat it, but I only have one and I don't want to buy another <laughs> one and I'm on a paddleboard and I'm like, man, so they I'm weren't that big? Uh, they were probably like 30, 35, nothing too oh, yeah, Don't mess it up over yeah. a 35. Yeah, that's why I was like, that's yeah, not yeah. worth it. You it's got a 45 it. following it, then yeah. yeah. Beat yeah, it to exactly. it. <laughs> kind of weigh the, uh, weigh the, weigh the thing we got going on there. But yeah, yeah. There was, I've had no, probably I... five or six followed in, but like there was, I was never, uh, ambitious enough to mess around with one on the paddle board and, and tear up a soft bait. That's kind of already hard to get. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. I, uh, I, I've never been hardcore musky guy, but I've, I've, I've got a little bite figured for him that I really enjoy doing. So yeah, it's a pretty fun little special deal. There's a, there's a bunch of fish to be caught and they're, they're really big and healthy. Like, you know, I, I've probably caught more over 45 inches than I have under 45 inches. Dang, that's crazy. And I've maybe caught 30 muskies. Mm -hmm. Damn. <laughs> maybe, maybe not even 20, yeah, 25 to 30 muskies. And I, I mean, 45, might, uh, definitely more over 42 yeah. than under. Dang. Like, they're all really good, healthy fish. Yeah. I, I went out to St. Clair on a, on a musky guide uh, this October, or maybe it was November, but I, I, I know why guys do that. You know, I didn't even move. I moved one I fish was way off the boat, but it was just like, yeah. man, any point in time, I could have a 50 come slam this this big old 14-inch soft bait I'm fishing. It's like just that elusiveness is yep. what keeps you locked in for it during the day. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, yeah, I, we played with them a little bit last year on Mille Lacs. Tried to. I was like, but I I just heard how the musky fishing is on that place. Like you're better off trying to freaking catch anything else in the dang world than a musky out of Mille Lacs. But they're yeah. they're big there, from what I hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen. Uh, we had an old state record caught a couple of years ago, and I want to say, dude, it was massive, like over forty pounds out of yeah. out of a big lake up north. And they caught it on a big old, big, huge plop and bait. It was like this big, and it was just a solid chunk of cedar with some hooks on it. Right. And uh, they had to keep the fish. But I mean, dude, it's taken two full grown guys to hold this fish up on this yeah. on this stick. And it's just like, yeah, uh, Missouri state record is a forty one pounder that, believe it or not, come out of Lake of the Ozarks in like the late eighties or early nineties. Um, they did a stock in there. There's there's not a population of them there in there anymore. Like there hasn't been in years. There's, there's a, a few that get in there from pound to tear somehow from what I understand, because there was a couple caught two years ago, but like there's no population, but state record come out of Lake of the Ozarks, a 41 pounder. Um, mm -hmm. There was one caught out of fellows Lake that ended up, it was longer than the state record. It was like a 51 and a half or 52 or something like that. 
uh, didn't weigh quite enough. And both the fish I caught were probably right there within the three to five pound range short of the state record. I, I assume I didn't weigh them, but I assume they were, they were heavy thirties. They were both just healthy as it gets. Man. Um, so the guys who broke the state record, it was in 2012, 59 inch, 58 pound muskie. Jesus in Is Michigan. That, yeah. That eat a small kid. <laughs> that's, right, that's big. That's a that's real big. That's a big old fish. Yeah, that I think I, I I don't know about that big, but I think there's probably some forty or fifty four to fifty five inch, yeah, over forty pound fish to be had in Missouri. But uh, yeah, they're they're muskies. They're not easy to catch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a reason got to cast ten thousand times before you get to even see one. <laughs> no doubt. Heck yeah, man. But so, uh, so Kevin and I were, when, when I had Kevin on the podcast a couple weeks ago, he had mentioned your name and kind of how, how you're helping out around the shop and stuff. What's that been like? Cause you, I mean, you, we talked about at the beginning of the podcast, podcast, you were buying baits from him in 2017. So it kind of seems yeah, like it was yeah. full circle yeah, well, almost. Our, our friendship just kind of grew from there and I started fishing his stuff and having a whole bunch of success on it. And, and, and we started fishing together throughout the years and stuff. So, uh, I was working for Boatworks there in Nixon, Missouri, and uh, that place went under. So uh, I was looking for a looking for an opportunity, and Kevin was needing somebody full time. So I I moved down here to Bella Vista, Arkansas, and uh, working full time with Kevin, and it's it's been awesome. He is he's he's made it real easy for me. He's been super super good to me, and uh, I'm thankful for him for sure. It's been it's been a really good deal. I enjoy it a okay. lot. How long how long have you been with him now? Yeah, close to four months. Okay. Yeah, four months. So yeah. we're just getting rolling, but uh, it's going awesome. I'm loving is it, it. Is it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you you've been you've been in the swim bait world, and kind of people know about you and stuff in the swim bait world. Is it weird to kind of be behind the scenes now and like kind of see how the sausage is made, helping make baits and everything? Is it kind of? No, no it, it it feels really natural. Actually, it, it's uh, super comfortable and just like like meant to be there like it's just all kind of been a natural progression that it's worked out really well mm-hmm. heck yeah man what uh what do you do like do you load up the website and, and do the pictures yeah. and everything and yeah i do things? all that i'm doing uh most of the customer service stuff uh, a lot of the ordering of uh, materials and and uh you know 30 hours out of the week i'm actually just out there making baits so oh, heck yeah I'm I'm doing you know and pretty well everything besides you know the stuff that Kevin likes to handle and you know some of the bigger bigger stuff and he's 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 got a lot of time to to go and tinker and design baits and stuff like that so I'm trying to just do my best to take control and uh, take care of everything else so he can focus on that kind of stuff. That's awesome, man. Is there is there any uh, any certain bait that you go into work and you're just so excited to pour because you know they're going to either sell out super fast or it's your favorite bait to make? And oh, I mean, I'm stoked about the trout. That thing's going to be yeah, awesome. Yeah. I'm super excited about it. Yeah. Every day I go in, I'm I'm trying to push Kevin. Like, come on now, let's let's get it rolling. Let's get <laughs> yeah. this thing done. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love those things. And then we've been we've been building out some of the pounders. They're they're fun. Uh, yeah. Those are cool baits. There's there's definitely some guys that we're going to get those in the hands of. I think that uh, we're going to catch some big old fish on those. They're big, but they're not they're not too big. They're they're big. They're giant. They're they suck to throw, but they're going to freaking get smoked. Heck yeah, dude. Have you gotten to fish one yet, or just mess around with them? Yeah, yeah, I've got one. Uh, I hadn't I hadn't put it in any on any on any big fish bite or anything yet. I've just kind of swam it, thrown it, thrown it on stuff on table rock and stuff where I ain't going to catch no freaking giant on it, but. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a real fun deal. I it's, it's a cool bait. You guys actually, uh, for for I mean, when people are hearing this, they'll probably be gone. But everybody's been commenting on every single KGB social media post that they want the Kings, and now they're in. Well, they were in stock earlier. I don't know if they're still yeah, there. We, did, we, did, we we took a bunch of the classic. They sold out pretty quick. We kept a we kept a handful of them for the guys that could make it to classic and dropped yeah. them online, and they went real fast. And uh, um. I think the plan now is to kind of revamp the King and make it even better. There seems to be a pretty good demand for it. Don't mark my words. That's, that's Kevin's call, but uh, I'm going to try and improve it even more and try and pump some more out, more, more Kings out. I mean, guys are, uh, I think progressing into wanting the the bigger stuff after they've got hooked on the, the Chad Shad and the legend and stuff like that. And they're like, okay, well that's not so big. Let me, let me try the big stuff. And, yeah. and guys are really interested in that. It's going well. So we're going to, I think we're going to try and improve on that and, and keep those flowing because they're freaking awesome. That's like, they're really not that big. Like they're, 
they're fish catchers. Like right. you can go chuck one anywhere and, and, and catch fish. You really can. Like they're yeah. people, you, people like them. I mean, if, for uh, a good reason, they're, if, they're fishy baits. Like you, you, you think of like a Hinkle shad. I mean, it's Hinkle shads like in between the King and the legend say like weight wise, profile wise. It's that's, and I mean, that's a staple for a lot of guys. Uh, phony shad that's that's kind of a staple for a lot of guys and that's kind of in the mid mid in, in between that that size class so i mean the king's just a little bit of a step up and it's not much bigger than any of that other stuff that guys are smoking fish on so they're not heck scared to they're not scared to upsize a little bit and try it and heck yeah dude have uh oh do, 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 do. I was going to ask you something. Oh, have you gotten to try your hand at painting at all? Have you, have you given that a shot? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I've played with it, but uh, <laughs> I had a lot of fun with it. I'm, I'm going I'm to let the homie paint and take care of that stuff. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've definitely got to play with it a little bit. Kevin's let me tinker around a little bit and it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I've enjoyed it. I was, I was pretty proud of myself if I'm being honest, but no, we're, we're going to let the homie paint and take care of that stuff. But uh yeah, maybe some personal baits. I'll I'll put some color on and go catch some fish on them and that kind of stuff. Yeah, at least uh, at least I know how it's done. I think. Yep. Yeah. Heck yeah, dude. What uh, what's your if you're going out tomorrow or you know you're going out to to fish new body of water? Is there a certain KGB bait that you reach for over any others? I mean, to be honest, I'm I'm conventional fishing a lot nowadays. I I spent over four years pretty well. Uh, fishing strictly swim baits, sold everything else, went full swim bait mode, uh, learned a ton, caught a lot of big fish. Um, and in the last two years, I've learned when to throw them, when not to throw them, when to throw something else. Yeah. Um, so I've, I, I'm trying to just get, get real dialed to just be able to catch a big fish all the time, you know, is my goal. I want to, I want to throw what they're going to eat, whatever that might be. Um, but dude, as far as KGBs, like it's hard to say. Depends right. on the lake. Like if yeah. it's hell, if I go out to freaking Possum Kingdom in Texas, I'm probably gonna tie on a king shad, you know, and freaking yeah. look for a big one. If I'm gonna go out to, I don't know, up north or some smallmouth fishing, then I'm gonna go throw around a Chad shad or, uh, you know, around here if it's a new lake, then I'll probably throw a legend because that's good little middle ground bait that will get bit by everything. So. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, I have confidence in every one of those baits. They all freaking get smoked and not to be biased or anything, but I, I have all the confidence in the world in them and they, the fish like them. Right. I, get I think a lot of people are seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. I think so for sure. Uh, last question for you. What, uh, what are the setups so when you are going to go out and swim bait fish and even conventional fish, what are the setups that you're usually trying to run if you had to pick a couple? I mean, like, like for example, the Chad shed, I like to, blacklist or ghost code 710 by f5 i throw just f5 stuff um that 710 is awesome seven foot ten rod it's like in my in my opinion as far as swim bait fishing goes it's like a medium light like it's it loads so deep just an awesome rod uh, as far as like legend and stuff i'm looking for that 806 range I might even throw it on the 710 if i'm on like some small mouth for trying to run light hooks stuff yeah. like that i'm I might kind of overload a rod a little bit, throw a little bit heavier bait on it, just just so I can get away with throwing light hooks and light line and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then you know, king shad, I throw the eight sixty seven range, and I, I usually, for the most part, I run braid deleter sixty five pound braid to twenty twenty five or thirty pound, just big game, uh, or I'm throwing straight twenty or twenty five pound sniper. Um, I, I I like high gear ratio reel. Uh, nothing, nothing too crazy or fancy on that aspect. I like braid deleter for the most part, uh, winter time, clear water, soaking a bait or something. I like fluoro or I can keep it down. It's stealthy. It's a little bit thinner. Yeah. Uh, you can get your bait swimming a little bit, a little bit slower and wider. But, uh, if I'm not, if I'm not fishing winter methodical, that kind of stuff, then just braid deleter. And I like a parabolic rod and a high gear ratio reel and braid to braid to a mono leader. Heck yeah, Nothing crazy. I like I like to go thin round bend hooks. Um I think it sticks the fish that I'm I fish for a lot better. Right. Um like they like to swipe, they like to blow it out of the water, they like to come up and mess with it and stuff. And I think the the light wire hooks are a big deal around here. Right. 
Heck yeah, man. You had said, you had mentioned earlier uh, the Lou's and the Abu Reels, and that's kind of something interesting. You know, 99% of guys are saying die over Shimanu, and I have the uh, that white and black Abu Revo Toro, I think. Like yeah. 50. Dude, I love that reel. That's the reel I fish my mother on. I mean, I throw, I throw Shimano just as much. I throw a 200 Corrado K just yeah. for my Chad Sheds and, and yeah. seven inch three ounce baits and stuff like that. I've got a 300 K that. I throw a lot of my soft baits on it. It's not my favorite reel. I like the I like the uh, Revo Beast and the, the Super Duty 300. Those two reels, the Super Duty 300 and the Revo Beast 40, 40 series, uh, they just they feel identical in the hand. They they both perform awesome. Like they're both like a lot of the times I don't realize what reel I'm fishing. They feel right. both identical. Yeah. To me, I mean, and uh, no, other than that, like I I throw those those two and I throw the Corrado K's and stuff, but uh, other than that, I keep it pretty simple. Heck yeah, man. Yeah, I don't, just, and guys will overdo it, and obviously you, you can get away with it, but you can also get away with, with fishing just some normal stuff and, and keeping fish pinned and burning them into the boat and it's kind of whatever, yep. everybody, everybody, different strokes for different folks, obviously. Yeah, I had I had some hard lessons early on swim bait fishing of uh, bending out hooks, and mm. and I, I bent out a lot of big fish for using too heavy a rod, just freaking trying to grind them in too hard straight braid deleter i mean i even did it on mono freaking just bent the crap out of some hooks on some fish yeah. but i've i've changed something i don't know if it's the way i'm fighting them i think it's more like the parabolic rods i've I've come to learn to to use instead of that freaking how stout heavy stuff that everybody in the beginning thought you had to throw to yeah. you know to, to fish a big swim bait you don't need freaking a ginormous broomstick you want to you want a long handle and a and a long you know at least a seven six rod at least i yeah. prefer seven ten and up but uh want a parabolic and i think that's the biggest factor really yeah you don't need a freaking broomstick to throw them you're not going to probably do very well you don't need that uh that akuma guide select big 10 ounce rod that no, big old no, no like straight soft soft baits jig hooks and beast hooks and yeah, yeah that's when i use that kind of yeah. stuff for sure but uh no, as far as glide baits go and treble baits, then no, you don't want to, you don't want none of that. It's, <laughs> I learned the hard way. I think most guys get that. Uh, it's like a big crankbait. Throw, throw, it's just an oversized crankbait as far as your tackle tackle yeah. goes, in my opinion. You want your fishing treble hooks, and those fish aren't freaking swallowing the thing most most of the time. So, yeah, you want a big, big crankbait or a big jerkbait, something like that. <laughs> yeah. That's the way I look at it. Yep, exactly. Big jerk bait. That's how that's how keep I fish it, my keep it, as, keep it as light as you can go, in my opinion. Yep. Heck yeah, man. Well, dude, that was everything that I had. I spitballed everything Great. I had to you. Was there uh, was yeah. there anything else that, that you were ready to talk about that we didn't touch on? Not in specific. I mean, I ain't got anything too crazy. I can show you a couple baits or something. Ooh, yeah, but yeah, see some baits. I mean, let me let me walk out of the garage. I ain't got anything too exciting. I mean, I'm yeah, sure Kevin good. showed most of it before, but uh well, at least throw it in there, eh? Do you, uh, do you by chance have that negotiator out in the garage? You, you know, matter of fact, I think I do. Ooh, there's the old there's the old Skeeter I'm fishing out of. The old, oh, there you go. The old uh, 21 foot ZX 250. So there's the trout that we started. Playing. So now I painted this, so that's why the paint is flaking <laughs> off. So nobody roast me. I didn't wrap it or anything. I sprayed some paint, and there you go. But, uh, that's, that's that's one of the first trouts we were testing, and uh, that was like my that was my first ever trout paint job. So, hey man, and better than I can. That, <laughs> that's why that ain't sticking. But uh, well, I had some pretty good mentors as far as that goes. But trout's coming along. We've uh, made a couple changes as far as the joint and the weighting and stuff like that. Uh, some little bit cosmetic stuff, but it's it's coming along really well. Uh, what am I looking for? <clears throat> Being negotiator, that's in the boat. There's a pounder. It's tied on right now. Oh man, that's yeah. Peyton painted that one up for me uh, in the shop. It looks really good. Are that's you some... running? Are you running PE on all your bigger baits or just the pounder? Yeah, like like king and up, mother king, that kind of stuff. I think it's important, okay. but I like to. I like to just hand tie them right onto the hangers. Right. And uh, something I figured out myself is it's not focusing real real well, but at the end of the end of the PE assist cord, I like to burn the ends into mm -hmm. a little ball. Yep. And you tie that around it 
with some like gel spun uni thread or something that yeah. doesn't break and put a little drop of super glue on that. And I sat there and bent out a whole bunch of hooks, seeing if it would fail. And it, it's, 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 it's not going to, it's either. not going to fail. Okay. So that worked out pretty good. Uh, and I'm the negotiator. It's in the boat somewhere. I think <laughs> I've been fishing a bunch of sissy stuff the last couple of days on table rock, but. I got I got a couple of some baits tied on there at least. Hey man, if you're catching them, we we can't discriminate against that. You're catching them. No, <laughs> not better. catching them good enough, but better than better than our swim bait either. Here's <laughs> that mother I've been throwing for a couple of years. Dang, oh the white snake too, the best one. Uh, this isn't the negotiator. This is a good one. That's that's the good one. I won't get rid of in the same color, but it's okay. not the one. Where is it? I think it's in the rod one. <laughs> It's somewhere around here. I knew it as I saw it the other day. There it is. I found it. It's in the bottom of the rod locker, right where it should be. Right there. <laughs> Dude. Yeah, that, that little rascal's been been eaten well. Let me see if I can uh, Yeah, let me see if I can flip that camera around there. Yeah, she's she's in good shape. Dang, dude. <laughs> I mean, it could be worse, but uh, I mean, it's got some freaking teeth marks on it. Those are all just teeth marks all across every inch of the thing. Dang, dude. I mean, the paint kind of doesn't hold up well on these, but like right. the paint other than where the hooks have been, like isn't doing so bad. Really, for as much use as this thing's seen. Yeah. Dang, dude. So that's the color mother I had, the, my first mother, and it did not swim worth a crap. <laughs> yeah, I've had an IU mother, and it didn't swim worth a crap either. I sold it. That that white snake swims awesome, though. I love it. It swims really good. Dang. Yeah, got a whole bunch of whole bunch of sissy stuff in the boat right now, but they've been liking it. Oh yeah, dude. You can't you can't you can't make fun of somebody for catching fish. That's for sure. <laughs> Well, I ain't catching them good enough. But I love jerk bait fishing. That's 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 my favorite, right behind swim bait fishing. Yeah, hard, good jerk bait bites. Hard to uh, hard. I freaking love them. That's 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 where it's at this time of year. If they're not on a swim bait, I'm throwing jerk bait. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, buddy. Well, man, well, I think ain't got too much there to show, but a uh, couple baits for you. Heck yeah, dude! What, Thanks uh, for having me on. I yeah, what's it. what's your uh, what's your Instagram where people can follow you if they're not following you already? Uh, that'd be Brennan underscore Banks Fishing. Perfect. As that always, would be. I'll put uh, I'll put but Brennan's uh, Instagram in the show notes. You guys can go follow him if you're not already. Do you have a YouTube channel or anything or cast to catch? No, 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 no YouTube. Tried the TikTok deal, fell off of that pretty quick. So, <laughs> no, I don't do too much social media besides just some fish pictures here and there on the Facebook and the Instagram. So, heck yeah, man. Well, you guys make sure to go follow Brennan, scroll through his page. I'm sure you guys can see some of the fish that he was talking about tonight. Give him a follow. Like, like I said, he's a fishy guy. He's always posting up some fish pictures and stuff and, and whatnot. But other than that, Brennan, I want to thank you for coming on, man. It was a yeah, good episode. Appreciate it, Adrian fun talking to you getting to hear uh hear what that ozark area fishing is like it's a lot different from up here and i guarantee people up in new england are listening to this and like oh i wish i had fishing like that where i'm from <laughs> but, and i just wished i lived four or five more hours south where it was real good but. right yeah 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 i'm well, in the middle so i can go either way pretty easy heck yeah man. make it make it make a day drive in either direction and have any of it so yeah yeah end up end up where there's fish somewhere at least <laughs> exactly all right well i appreciate you adrian heck yeah man i hope you guys enjoyed this episode and i will talk to you guys next time see you guys